Did that just happen? I... I don't know what I've witnessed here, but... I, I'm... Wow. <laughs> I'm so confused. I don't really know how to respond to that. Instantly after the full-time whistle, and the result is Burnley 5, Cardiff City 0. And I, I could make much more sense of it if, you know, if we played, like, incredibly well, and, like, it all made sense, but it, it, it doesn't. I mean, if we are being honest here, first off particularly, we were, we were poor. We were very poor in terms of a percentage of what we think our max level is. We were probably playing around 30%. Second half was better, absolutely. Not perfect, but better. So altogether, I would say that's probably 60 odd percent of our potential cap capabilities in that game. And we won at 5 0. Let's try to break down into it and just make some sense of what just happened. Um, yeah, Burnley right now are currently now top of the table. May not mean too much as we're only two games in, but what does matter is nine goals scored and one goal conceded. And that is going to be a, a statement and a half for the rest of the division. Leeds United today drawing away at West Brom. The only team alongside us that have won both games is Watford as of this current moment. And looking at the stats of the game, I mean, first off, it was it was quite damning. You know, 40% possession and three shots. And I can't even name you more of the chances we really had. First off, going into that, it was erratic. I don't really remember who was having, having many you know, passages of play that made sense, consistent, you know, phases of how we get the ball up the pitch. I don't really remember having Cullen or Brown in the ball much in the first half. Like, their midfield seemed to really punish us, and it was getting quite concerning. But then, lo and behold, I look at the scoreline, we're 2 up. I, I couldn't really make sense of it at half-time, and it kind of hit me thinking... If we are playing this poorly and we are still 2-0 up, then what is the championship at this stage? And of course, that will come across quite condescending if you're a fan that's, you know, of a fan of a club in a championship. But we've played at not even 70% of our capability here. We played quite poorly for large periods of that game and we won 5-0. And if I was to put it down to one key aspect of how, how far ahead we really are, we look at the subs. We're bringing on Johan berg -Gummensen. Countless years of experience in the Premier League. You know, how many years is it, would it be now? F seven years of Premier League experience. We're bringing on Val Vegor. He was playing at a new camp for Manchester United, starting against Barcelona two years ago. He hero for Netherlands at the World Cup and also the Euros. Zeki Amdouni, who two years ago was one of the most sought-after young talents in Europe. Don't forget, he had the most goals for Switzerland in the European qualifiers, and he scored about seven, eight goals in the Europa Conference League for Basel. I, I can't really fathom what I'm seeing here, boys. Um, so, yeah, going for the squad here now, absolute top-quality performance in terms of the result. But I still think there's still some ways to go here. If I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go into a lot of positives here. I'm gonna go for the team, but just kind of labour out my one little concern that I have, because I don't know if it papers the cracks a little bit. However, the idea of Vitinho playing kind of in a five-two-three formation when we're out of possession, so Vitinho kind of drops in as a right wing back, and then Roberts goes as kind of a right centre back. I, I, if we're playing away from home, I completely get it, but I think at home against sides that we would expect to have a lot more of the ball, I don't think it's really necessary, so I do hope in next games that we kind of go a bit more, you know, we're a bit more enthusiastic, a bit more inspirational in terms of our attacking intent and that concern. But I can't say that because he won 5-0, so that sounds stupid. But I do think that giving Fatino a bit more leniency to be much more forward of the pitch would be a bit better. Uh, does it kind of offer more options? Because it does feel sometimes you get a bit stacked in the middle of the park and a bit congested. So, that's one thing that I would like to see changed in terms of home fixtures, especially. Um, let's go for the team here. Um, Halarki, Czech goalkeeper, played, of course, every single 
game for Ipswich last campaign. I felt like he had a very good game. Um, I don't think there was any issue with him at all. I think passing-wise, he was composed. He made the right decisions at the right times. Um, the only eh, maybe you can maybe say, is uh, the offside goal that Cardiff did score. And Haladki maybe could have held it, but that's just kind of more wishful thinking. Most keepers don't just hold it in. I think he was a bit blindsided. So, other than that, great debut game for, for Haladki. Passing-wise, composed, no concerns at all. Back for Lucas Perez. I would say in the first half, he did look quite, um, not erratic, but... Just wasn't really keeping a hold of the ball quite a bit. Made a few rushed passes, trying to get to the ball to Collie Osho, and he just couldn't make it. And defensively, I didn't think he was um, too bad defensively. It was just sometimes a bit erratic in his decision-making for that final pass. Um, I remember some, I think it was early on in the second half, that the ball, it was on for a break, and uh, Perez just was no one around him, really. He just fell over. Um, I guess his momentum just went over him, and he just fell, f fell in his bum, which is... a uh, Funny to now look back on as we won the game five nil, but second half he did get a lot, of, you know, a lot more going on, a lot more in his decision making. But I think at that stage Cardiff kind of gave up. Um, Esteve Oshay, I thought they were both really great. A lot of times that they were put under pressure, can go up top for for Cardiff, and I feel like they dealt with with them really well. Cardiff, even though I would say Cardiff was definitely the better side in first half they didn't really create much like even though I said that we were quite poor in first half we weren't poor in terms of we were giving away really clinical opportunities it was just that from our expectations we didn't really take control and grab at a game so again that's maybe something something that we can work on I think we need Cullen and Brownell particularly Cullen to get on the ball a lot more when he actually got on the ball late on in that first half you can you can sense a lot more of a of a comfort with a team, so hopefully we can have Cullen to have a, bit, a lot, a lot more of a play because I didn't really notice him much in the first half. Second half as well, at periods as well. But anyway, Esteve O'Shea, great pairing, dealt with a lot of pressure in the first half. Second half, don't think Cardiff did much. So hopefully. O'Shea can stay, and that can be a centre back pairing for the, for the season ahead. Connor Roberts again, um, solid. I mean, e easy. 7 out of 10. I didn't notice too much with him, but when he was called, called up upon, he did a good job. Um, so, yeah, back four. Solid. No issue at all as far as I'm concerned for moving forwards. And then there's the midfield two of Josh Brown and Cullen. Again, as I said in the first half, I didn't notice him too much and we really got overrun in that midfield. And it took a, a lot of time to really get a hold of the game. And second half, I didn't feel like we really grabbed much of the game too much other than the end of the last 25 minutes or so where the game was kind of gone Cardiff kind of already knew that it was over so they just let us have the ball I feel like you know if when the game was still active and the game was still competitive you know it looks like they weren't really on it as much um, particularly Cullen which that's his vital role so hopefully he can get much more of the ball in the next game because I, you know, again I thought they were really good against Luton so maybe it's just one of those games but yeah Again, if we go forward, let's say in a world that Sanderberg does get sold for 25, 30 million pounds, I'm still more than happy with Cullen and Brownhill as a midfield two for the campaign. I still think that's more than good enough for the championship, clearly. Um, another centre mid would be nice behind them. Masengo, of course, is behind them, but I think another one would be nice. But yeah, solid enough. Fatinio. Energy, again, first half, like most players, I call it call it can also be added as well. Just a bit erratic, trying to do a bit too much, you know, trying to take on one and then the second man to get caught out. That happened quite often with both wingers. So it's one of them, again, they offer the energy. Collie show is lightningly quick and so exciting, but we didn't, we just didn't get the ball to him as often as we really should. But yet again, he came out with a goal. And Vitinho, second half, a fantastic assist for Brown for that third goal. And it looks like, when we play sides away from home, we've seen like our current system is perfectly matched for that, for that transition or counter-attacking style of football. So right now, with how we play today, that would be more ideal to me, that system, playing away from home. I hope at home, we have a bit more emphasis on getting the ball a lot more. But Fatino, great assist for the third goal. And Luca Coliosho, I mean, I think their keeper was very poor. The second, the first goal, we... I think we all know what happened there, but the second goal, I still feel like Colly Osho didn't grab the ball too much. Your contact wasn't the best, but it was clearly enough. And um, the keeper Horvath was um, absolutely diabolical, unfortunately for the for the fairly young man. 
Jared Rodriguez as a number 10 in this game, of course. Number 10 was played as Odebert. People suspecting maybe um, Anna Sarori to be in that spot this season. Oh, sorry, sorry, after Odebert went. I think we all can agree that it probably will be Zeki Amdouni moving forward if he does stay, which I really hope he does because I love him. I think that he's... I said it last year, but I think he's our most talented player. And I may be really easy to say based on what just happened today and that with that goal but I, I just think there's so much that he can offer it's just trying to find the right way to fit him into, into a team and last year it just didn't work out unfortunately uh, but Jay Rodriguez I don't think he was bad by any means I just think he was he, he was okay he held up the ball second goal he did really well to get past his man using his pace which is remarkable with his age but I guess it says a lot about the league and then just didn't hesitate just was composed, cut the ball back, and it fell to Colliosho for the second goal. And, I mean, it was game over at that stage, wasn't it? But, yeah, J-Rod did pretty good. But I think we know that he probably won't be the number 10 moving forward. But, again, it's more experience, it's more depth that we have that other teams simply don't have. And then Lyle Foster, which I think still had a decent game. People may be... Um, a bit concerned at times that he may not get involved too much, but when he does, you absolutely notice him. He absolutely gets a hold of the game. You know, when the ball comes to him in a deep area, he can drive you up the pitch 30, 40, 50 yards. He's so good at that. When there's any sort of transition, he's, I mean, he's, he's just clinical. He's absolutely clinical. And he ran and he ran and he ran, and that's brilliant. And then the subs, I mean... I want to shout out here to Zeki, oh, Zeki later on, but uh, to Johan, Johan berg In the first five seconds, he he basically confirmed what I was begging for last season, was basically, I think Johan is our best number 10. I, I think he's our best passer of the ball to actually split open a team. So many times we were missing that final ball, that final bit of quality in the final thirds to really cut open a defense, that final line. And it was, I was begging for Johan to, to try him out at number 10 because I think he's our best passer. He was on the pitch for five seconds and he put that beautiful diagonal ball in a path of, I believe he was Lucas Perez, the second he got subbed on and then um, he put a ball in, I think it was out for a corner because he was looking for um, Vegost. But Johan with a goal and with just that pass, man, it just shows me the quality. And I just can't believe a world where from what we saw with a clip between company and Johan, maybe inner relationships and inner fighting was the reason why he wasn't played as much last campaign, and that's a shame. Um, Zeki Amdouni, incredible goal. He's got so much talent, and if we can keep him, play him as at number 10, he's going to be an absolute monster. Monster. I'm, I'm double digits for goals and assists from, the, from this man. I absolutely can guarantee you that. I rate him so highly. Then Valt Veghorst. If you were to tell me, you know, last season, even two seasons ago, that I'd be seeing Valt Veghorst back in the championship under Scott Parker for Burnley, I would tell you that you're on crack. You know, I can't believe that he's still here. And you know what? I really hope he stays just because I, I, I would love the redemption. I would love it. Now, I don't think he touched the ball much at all. He just didn't get the opportunity to, unfortunately. Um, I remember seeing the crowd almost hoping that Johan can pass the ball to, Yo to Vegos for that fifth goal. Um, he opted to shoot and, of course, was the better option. But I don't know. There's... Some people may not like Vegos. I've always been in, I've I've always been on the side of Vegos in terms of I still feel like he had something to offer last season. I still felt like he should have stayed. I was there in Genk when I don't know thirty percent of the fans there was booing him, and the other thirty was clapping him off. I, I I didn't really want him to leave. I get why people have their grievances. I get that completely. And yeah, I do feel like there was an there was an ego there with Vegos. I do feel like you know he wants to play at a higher level, but I don't really blame him. I don't. So when it comes to Vegos, I would love for him to stay, just because I'm a football romantic in that way. I'm very into you know a, a good story. I would love for him to try to have some remarkable redemption, but. I still feel like I'm 80% on the way that he's probably going to go anyway, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, man. Burnley won 5-0 in a game that we probably was at 60 70% of our capabilities. 
Nine goals scored, one goal conceded. I never want to leave this league again. I never want to leave this league. I never want to leave the championship. It's a fantastic league. I love this league. I love it. If we can somehow stay in here forever, but just keep just just win the league, but just refuse to get to get promoted, I would. <laughs> and that may sound stupid, but Christ Almighty, no VAR. We're winning games of football. Oh man, it's a good time to be alive. Tell me your thoughts down below. The Burnley boys are top of the league, and let's hope that it lasts. Enjoy your day. See ya.